The Bible reveals that God's judgments are coming soon, when God's Holy Spirit will be withdrawn, and when the seven last plagues will fall. So what are these seven last plagues? When do they come? And what causes these judgments to fall? And how can we make sure that we don't receive these plagues? Join me as we find out. The Bible tells us that the mark of the beast crisis is the final test before Jesus returns, and that the seven last plagues will fall on those who receive the mark of the beast. If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. I deal with the mark of the beast in my other videos. Feel free to check them out, they're in the description below. But in short, the mark of the beast crisis will be over true and false worship, between the true day of worship, which is the seven-day Sabbath of creation, and the false day of worship, which is Sunday. Sunday rest will first be pushed as a secular movement, as a day of rest for the family, but eventually it will become a religious movement. And ultimately, Sunday worship will be promoted under the guise of turning back to God, and saving the earth from the various disasters and calamities. No one has yet received the mark of the beast, because it has not yet been enforced. But when the time comes, those who choose to reject the authority of God, and honor the Sunday instead of God's seven-day Sabbath, will receive the seven last plagues. And we are told that the seven last plagues are God's punishments on a world that has rejected His authority. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So let's take a look at the first plague. And I heard a voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went, and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. As a result of the first plague, those who receive the mark of the beast will receive noisome and grievous sores. These are severely harmful sores on the skin, which will cause great pain to those who receive them. For most people will accept the mark of the beast for fear of survival, as there will be laws prohibiting buying and selling, for those who stand for God's Sabbath commandment and who refuse to honor the Sunday. But those who give in to the demands of the worldly authority will ultimately receive the displeasure of God in these plagues. So now let's take a look at the second plague. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. This is similar to the first plague which struck Egypt in the time of Moses. And there have been many times when bodies of water have turned blood red. These are called red tides. But when it happens during the second plague, it will be a worldwide event, and it will be a signal manifestation of divine power. And the reason for the waters being turned blood red is given in the third plague, in which other bodies of water are similarly affected. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. The turning of the waters to blood will now be extended to include not only the seas, but also the rivers and fountains of water. And people will have difficulty in finding clean drinking water to sustain their lives, as the available sources of water will have been made undrinkable. And we are told that when the waters in Egypt were turned to blood, not only were the rivers and ponds and other bodies of water affected, but also the water which had been stored in bowls and pots. And as it was in Egypt, it will be made clear to all that these plagues are the result of a divine judgment. And then we are told the reason for the waters being turned to blood. And I heard the angels of the waters say, You are righteous, O Lord, who is and who was and shall be, because you have judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. The nations of the world will unite to persecute God's commandment-keeping people, 
who will refuse to accept the mark of the beast. They wanted blood, and by the righteous judgment of God, they will be rewarded with blood as a signal punishment for their evil designs. And now we come to the fourth plague. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Under the heat of the fourth plague, people will be forced to drink the waters which were turned to blood in order to sustain their lives. Those who would have prevented God's people from buying and selling to sustain their lives will now themselves feel the famine, as food sources are destroyed from the heat and the massive die-off of sea life in the previous plagues, while God will provide for His people who trusted in Him. And despite the succeeding disasters, the people will still refuse to repent, instead choosing to blaspheme the name of God. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give Him glory. And God's justice will be seen in punishing the unrepentant. They had rejected God's mercy, and persistently refused to submit to His authority. Now they will receive the just rewards for their sin. And then comes the fifth plague, which brings about a major turning point. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. The seat of the beast is chiefly affected by this plague. The beast is the Roman Catholic Church, and her seat is in the city of Rome, and it will be made clear to all that even the seat of Satan's authority in the Vatican cannot withstand the power of these plagues. And it will be made clear that the Roman Church and her allies, the kings of the earth, are in fact fighting against God despite their pretensions, and that they are unable to protect themselves or anybody else from these plagues. They love darkness rather than light, and they deceive the world with their deceptions, and now God will give them darkness. And as people continue to blaspheme the name of God, we see that they are still suffering from the effects of the previous plagues, such as the pains and the sores, which tells us that these plagues come within a relatively short period of time. And these events will pave the way for the events of the sixth plague. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. This is a reference to the fall of ancient Babylon. In fact, the book of Revelation is filled with references to ancient Babylon, which have a spiritual application to modern Babylon in the last days. And this plague is the only one of the seven which has a symbolic rather than a literal application. And in order to understand the symbolic application to end-time Babylon, we need to understand the literal application at the time of ancient Babylon. The river Euphrates flowed through ancient Babylon, which is located in modern Iraq, and the drying up of the Euphrates River paved the way for the fall of the Babylonian Empire. As the Babylonian kings and nobles were feasting, the Medes and Persians, led by Cyrus the Great, dug canals to divert the flow of the river Euphrates away from the city of Babylon. As a result, the Medo-Persian army was able to enter the city by walking on the riverbed under the river gates, as the level of the Euphrates River was now lowered, and thus they conquered Babylon in one night. As the waters of literal Babylon dried up, so the waters of end-time Babylon will also dry up, leading to its destruction. The whore of Babylon in end-time prophecy symbolizes the Roman Catholic Church, and we are told that she sits upon many waters. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come here, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. And as the references to Babylon in the book of Revelation are symbolic, we are then told what these waters represent. The waters which you saw where the whore sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The waters of the river Euphrates in prophecy symbolize the people and nations of the earth which support the Roman Church and her agenda, 
which will ultimately result in the push for national Sunday laws before the seven last plagues come. So what is meant by the drying up of the waters is that the rulers and the people of the earth will realize that they are being deceived by the Roman Church and they will then withdraw their support from the papal system, causing its downfall. We are told that Babylon will be divided into three parts, meaning that there will be no more unity among its members as they abandon the papal system. And the ten horns which you saw upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the drying up of the waters of Babylon paves the way for the most monumental event in history. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. It was Cyrus the Great who came from the east to conquer Babylon and to set the Jewish captives free. And so in the last days, the fall of spiritual Babylon signals the imminent return of the Son of God. And this is in line with the prophecy in Daniel chapter 11, which tells us that in the last days, the Antichrist will be troubled by news coming out of the east and out of the north. And similarly, Jesus himself indicated that his coming will be from the east. For as the lightning comes out of the east, and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And before the end of the description of the sixth plague, we are told to be ready for this event. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. So when we see these events taking place, we are to know that the second coming of Christ is near even at the doors, as the seventh plague is about to fall. And this also confirms that God's people are still on the earth when the seven last plagues are falling, as Jesus tells them to prepare for his coming. The saints will not be raptured before the plagues fall, but God will protect his people from the plagues. As the Israelites were completely shielded from the last seven plagues which fell on Egypt, God's people in the last days will be protected from the seven last plagues. And then follows the seventh and the final plague. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven, from the throne, saying, It is done. As God's judgments on the wicked come to a close, the final punishment is given out before Jesus returns. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. This hail devastates what is left of civilization, and the great earthquake at Christ's second coming turns the earth into a desolate wilderness. And there were voices, and thunders, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And we are told that the unsaved will be in absolute terror as Jesus returns a second time. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every freeman, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? But for those who are saved, there will be no terror and no fear. This is the moment they were waiting for. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So as we have seen, 
The seven last plagues will fall after the mark of the beast has been enforced. We are not told how long the plagues will last, but they seem to be in close proximity to each other, as were the plagues in Egypt, as the effects of the previous plagues are still felt as the new plagues come. So it may take several weeks or months for all of these events to unfold, and the only way to escape the plagues at that time is to trust in God and to obey Him. For we are told that God will protect those who trust in Him from the power of the plagues, just as He protected the Israelites in Egypt. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plagues come near your dwelling. So that brings us to the end of the video. Like, share and subscribe if you like my content, and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.